I've got Luke with me. Um, obviously, you saw him in the video, and he's in it for two reasons. Uh, one, he's a lovely guy, great musician, and can kind of just do things off the bat and makes my life a lot, lot easier. Um, and the second is that he's also a trained electrician. Um, so he kind of understands uh, the electrical side of things a little bit more in depth than what I do. Um, this is the guy that I will rely upon if I, like do any like if i electrocute myself or or i have any risk of electrocuting myself when changing a light or i have no idea what to do when changing like fuses luke is always my go-to guy so thank you for coming on um and thank you for always being in my videos <laughs> and never actually getting to ha have any of like kind of the video time like i do so i understand impedance to be a bit more along the lines of like some sort of resistance and i know there's more to that as well yeah and perhaps we can dive into that at another point but in in relation to just the electrical side of things and how you understand it and you might have a bit more of an idea than i do on how the electrical side works yeah i mean like in in terms of uh for microphones um i'd say impedance is how difficult it is for electricity to flow at different frequencies which directly affects the volume of those frequencies that are captured so oh, okay so that would then mean that that then explains the reason why you might get a loss of fidelity as well at lower impedances as opposed to higher ones yeah definitely i mean like for instance like when we were recording these that was one of the first things that i noticed how almost it looked like it was chopped off on the first one this is the hh1 we're looking at at the moment and uh, but the bb29 as well if i just if i just drag this one out as well you can actually see that um both of them are are very similar and there's a there's a common trend we've got an extra take here that we decided not to use yeah. but i mean this is still on the the loudest impedance so these two are relatively the same but if we just take these four and we take these four you can really see that there's there's kind of this linear trend going up um where not only the output of the the mic pre is perceived to be louder but there's obviously a lot more dynamic range and especially on the hh1 which is the most surprising one for me as well um, although at the same time, I guess not because it's got double the output impedance of the BB29. So perhaps that also then means that the, the I guess the, the transformer on the input and the load impedance has to work harder. So that might be the reason why there was such a drop off. Um, cause the rule of thumb basically is, is that you have to have five times the impedance of the, uh, the microphone's output impedance in order for it to be properly loaded yeah um so that would then explain the reason why that has happened because the lowest impedance of the isa1 is 600 uh ohm and the second highest is 1400 ohm so with a 300 ohm output for the hh1 you would have to have a minimum of 1200 ohm uh load impedance on your preamp which is kind of consistent with the bb29 as well bb29 would have to have 750 so that's the reason why there's a drastic kind of change between the first two and especially between the first and the last one where the output sorry the load impedance uh is 6800 on as well so we're just going to kind of listen back through a couple of these samples and kind of just go through the most drastic um and uh kind of ends of the scale for this so we're going to go with the lowest impedance and then jump all the way to the highest impedance uh, apologies if my voice kind of goes away from this we've only got one mic set up between us they're all played exactly the same uh, as you saw in the video the the microphones didn't move luke didn't move so let's have a proper listen back um to the two most drastic differences and then discuss that and the switch The, the difference in like top end detail is just actually incredible. Like it's only when you kind of listen to the opposite ends of the scale. And, and for those who might have just watched this video in in correlation to reading the blog, obviously the, these are kind of in order. So it's kind of sometimes hard to hear unless you skip between two points in the video. So we thought we'd just kind of do this to make things a little bit easier for you as well. Uh, so let's move on to the BB29, um, which has half the output impedance that the HH1 does. So you'd have to have 750 ohm minimum. So the, again, the second 
high, uh, the second, the mid range impedance for this, this this second one here, would be the minimum that you would be able to use. And again, you can kind of see that, and it, it's more dynamic range across the board. Like if you, if we zoom in here. You can see that the quiet parts are always kind of, well, even the quiet parts start to become louder here, but the peaks are way more varied, like way, way more varied as the, is obviously the higher the impedance goes. Uh, and then on this one, it was very similar, but we started to get a bit more um, of a linear kind of look towards the peaks, but that also might be the fact that you're more comfortable playing by the time we got to the fourth one. So yeah, yeah. So the one thing that we can take away is the fact that the uh, the perceived output is higher. Um, and I mean, as long as uh, we can replicate the results in both a dynamic microphone and a condensed microphone. So I'm hoping that we'll see that this one's a bit more darker, um, maybe a little bit more kind of pokey in the low mid range kind of area yeah. and lacking on detail that would Cl clarify our results on the HH1, and then this one would be exactly the same as HH1, where it kind of makes you go, Oh, holy hell! Like, I didn't realize it was going to be that different. So, let's have a listen. Okay, switch. I mean, the BB29 is an already bright microphone, but it, it's the it's the it's the depth for me in, in the lack of depth on the first, yeah. uh, comparatively to both in terms of like the depth of the, how high the highs go and how low the lows go, and it just feels a lot fuller uh, to me. So, for those who are in the community, I'm going to be setting these as uh, downloadable as well, so you can go and listen to this in your own environment. And I'm fully aware that this might not be the most ideal situation to kind of listen to these, especially if you're out and you're watching this video. So if you do want to download these and put them into your own place, then you can do. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, thank you very much again to you, Luke. Um, and this is the first time I've actually oh, been able, to, first time I've been able to actually include you in a video and. And kind of like actually talk to you about something that i know that you've got a good amount of a kind of background experience on and i mean we were we were obviously taken aback by all of this while we were doing it it's something that can be so overlooked so thank you to everyone in the community that has asked for this video to be done um and if you haven't joined the jz mics community and you are already a jz mics owner uh, the link is down in the description below. I implore you to go and join there. We've got a brand new competition that's going to be coming out uh, very soon. And we are doing an entire focus month just around preamps. So there'll be a lot more of this content. So thank you all for watching. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video. Until next time, guys, stay creative.